So today we're going to be doing a bunch of tea pouring out of different teapots. We've got a Gaiwan, we've got Kutani, we've got just a Yixing. tiny little Yixing pot, we've got a normal glass pot, and then we also have a little French press. I'm also going to be showing you the right and wrong way to pour it because, believe it or not, there are right and wrong ways, and I've learned most of them the hard way. I will be using this strainer for both the clay and the porcelain. We're starting with the porcelain, so I'm just going to move a few things out of the way. And while I'm doing that, I will tell you the tea that we're using today. It's the Feng Kuang Chen Yun Ripened Pu'er Tea Cake from Tea Viv. So the first thing you want to do is warm your teaware. I'm just going to do this one at a time so that they don't go cold again. Um, you add a little bit of water. And then everything that you use, like this strainer and this quality cup, I'm just going to go ahead and pour the hot water. Making sure to warm everything up. For this one, I'm actually using this like mushroom looking set, which I love this set so much. I think it's called like the tea tasting set. Works very well. And so now everything is nice and warm. And then we're going to put the tea back in now that everything has been warmed. And we're going to add a little bit more water to remove any like dust particles from the tea. That's just a little bit of water. And that goes straight in here. So we're going to smell the cold, cold, the warm wet leaves now. It's kind of musty, um, basement-y, puer -y. If you've never had if, if you've never had puer, this does not sound good, but I promise you it tastes better than it sounds. Um, and we're just going to do one infusion. Let that sit for a few seconds and hold it onto here. So there are two ways that you can do this. The right way and the wrong way. So first, the wrong way. Um, the wrong way is you aren't holding it by this and you're letting it kind of drip like that. Um, and if you do this, it can actually... And, and if you don't hold it, I'm really afraid to do this, but if you don't hold it correctly, and you pour it over like this, it can, the lid can just tip out. Thankfully it didn't that time, but it's a possibility that it could go like that. And if you've overfilled it, it can actually come out this little hole right here. You see that hole? When you're pouring, you want to not completely cover it because then the tea won't actually come out. But you do want to make sure that you don't tip it completely upside down. Or the tea will start coming out of here because this is an open hole to the actual top. So like if you were to do that with water in it, the water would start to come out. And then, normally I wouldn't do this, but just to show you, I'm going to pour the water back in here and woo, immediately put the strainer back in so that I can show you the right way. So this is the way that I normally do it, which is to hold it like this and then hold it above and completely with little spout right above the pot. And you don't have to use a strainer, I just prefer a strainer because I don't want to read my tea leaves. Um, and then for this set in particular, the first thing you wanna do is pour the tea into this little cup right here. And this is for smelling, so you can go, you can smell it like that. And then you take your little cup and you make a mushroom, flip the mushroom on its head, and remove that, and then you can drink your tea. So, you can also just pour it like this, and I love this equality pot in particular because, one, it kind of looks like the genie's lamp, but two, this right here, The way it's made lets you just pour everything out and not leave too much behind. All right, so that's your clay pot. I will leave a link in the description so that you can get your own if you want it. 
And since we only have a certain amount of ow, leaves, I'm going to be removing the leaves from this pot and putting them into this one. So since we've already washed out the leaves, we don't have to do it again, so we can just add a little bit of water into here. We actually made an entire short about this a while ago, um, but there are quite a few ways that you can go wrong with the gaiwan. You kind of want to hold your finger right here and do about like that so that you aren't, and do not hold it like this. I have no tea in here because one, it will fall, and two, you will burn your hands. Remove this and pour your water into your cup, again, to warm it up. This is also a TV set, but you can see that the cups are made very differently. And um, then we're just going to pour that same water back into there. And since we've already washed the leaves, we don't need to do that again. So I'm just going to grab my little pineapple spoon and transfer the leaves and add some very hot water to this very easily warming um, porcelain gaiwan. It's already starting to heat up. You can feel it. If you were to be in this room with me and touch it, you would probably remove your hands immediately. It is that hot. So for this one, I like to let it sit just slightly longer so that it can kind of cool off a little bit. And this is what I was talking about. You want to grip it by this part because this will not be near as hot because it isn't directly in contact with the water. You want to hold it so that you can make sure to not get all of the leaves in there but still get all the water out, so about like this. And when you first put it in, the water will like rush out. So if your hands are over here, you're going to get a lot of very hot boiling water on your fingers. Also one thing to note with a gaiwan is if you aren't comfortable with having the inside of your palm steamed, I wouldn't recommend using a gaiwan for um, boiling. If you don't really like your hand to be steamed or you don't want to risk burning yourself as much, I would recommend one of these more than a gaiwan. However, one thing that I love about this set in particular is this equality cup. This is my first um, equality cup. They came with a set of Gaiwan. This is the one that I got for my birthday last year in 2021. Um, I also got my Minghai Palace Puer Cake in 2021. I won't be asking for a Gaiwan set again this year for my birthday, probably just a tea. Um, but this one is very special in my heart because of that. But this one kind of has also that same tip from the Gaiwan in the cup and the equality cup which can be both a good thing and a bad thing like if you want to hold it like this that's really good but if you want to hold it more like this one you kind of have to hold it slightly differently because of that ridge so just kind of make sure that you know how the teacup is going to feel in your hands like this teacup is a lot easier for my father to hold than say this one because it's a lot smaller and wider it's thinner and wider, so it holds about the same, but it's a slightly different configuration, so it's for different hands. We're again going to grab that tea and put it into the next teapot, which is the Katani. And I'm going to have a lot of fun cleaning all of this up later. That is a Japanese style pot. Um, the last two were Chinese, I believe. Mm -hmm. So in most Asian cultures, you do have tea, but they're very different. So with these two, it was a lot smaller. With the Kotani, which is actually what I got for Christmas last year. Um, thank you, Aunt Wendy. I have no clue where to get one like it ever again, because I think it's vintage. It's like 50, 60 years old. So probably not going to find one exactly like it again. So I'm just going to add the water again. This one I normally don't um, heat up beforehand just because it heats up actually really quickly. So I don't think it's necessary personally. These are actually some really big cups, but they're really, really pretty cups and they're fairly heavy in your hands. As you can see, they stack pretty well though. So that's a plus. These cups are also pretty good for my father to handle. 
However, this lid is very delicate, so people with unsteady hands, beware. Um, so this one, you do need to hold this, otherwise this will fall out. And I'm not even going to show you that falling out because I'm worried it would break. So I'm just going to hold it like that. Tilt it slightly. This is not for left-handed people. My mother already tried. It did not end well. This one you don't have to filter because it actually has its own little built-in filter. And this cup can hold quite a lot without spilling over, but I have added a little bit too much, so I'm just going to take this and... I'm make slurpy noises. I'm just going to use these like pot holders. Now really professional people do this. How does it taste different when you do that? It tastes kind of minty. I guess that's the extra air. No, that's the extra toothpaste. Oh. <laughs> well, we know I brushed my teeth this morning. Hooray. That's always good. I like this one because it actually has a really thick rim. So when you don't overfill it like I did, you can actually get um, a pretty good amount of tea. And you have no worries with it spilling with... With the TV, in particular the porcelain, it can sometimes get a little bit thin so it heats up a little bit quicker. This one, the pot heats up a lot faster than the cups do, which is helpful because that way you don't bring your hand as often. And also one reason that I absolutely love this teapot. This! It's a handle! You don't know how happy I was when I saw this on Christmas and I was like, oh, my handle. When you hold this, you aren't holding the same material that has been heated up as quickly by the water. So, no more burnt hands. This we actually got at a garage sale. So I'm not sure if it's vintage or if it's just old because apparently there's a difference. And with this one, you can actually just remove this little thingy right here. This is a very useful device. It has little holes that are like really thin, kind of like paper cuts along the edge of it. And it kind of looks like a beaker. It's, it's a beaker with paper cuts. So that's the strainer. However, there is one main, two main problems with this one in particular. Number one is that this right here heats up very fast and I can only put two fingers in it and even then my knuckles are touching the glass which can get really painful. And number two, which I will show you in a minute, is that in order to reach the actual tea, you have to add that much water this much water to even be able to reach the bottom of the filter. That seems a little bit excessive, doesn't it? But the nice thing is you can stop brewing just by pulling that out. You're definitely not going to do a quick um, Guy Wan themed one on this one. In this one, you brew the whole pot and then you pull that out and drink it as opposed to Guy Wan where you just keep pouring the little bits. This is English style brewing. Which I actually, um, now that I've tried both ways, I prefer like the pots, the guy wands, stuff like that. I don't actually prefer this method anymore. It's just a little bit too much all at once for me. Well, it starts off too hot and then cools. Mm-hmm. Instead of reintroducing hot water over and over. Which, another great thing is with this kettle, we don't have to worry about either of those things when we're doing stuff like this. Because we used to actually have, um, well, I would show you, but I can't reach it. Um, we used to have a kettle that was metal, and we would have to put it on the 
pot on the stove to warm the water up and we would have to wait for the fish eyes. With this one, we actually have a little electronic thing. We plug it in and we put the water in. We can reheat it and not have to move into the living room. And you just press a button to pick your temperature. And you can keep it warm too. And we'll link that below. Everything we're showing you that we can link, we will. We'll also probably link something fairly similar to this, but we won't be able to link this exact one. And then, our final contender, this guy. I have a lot of tea now. Hmm, I didn't think that through. Oh well, we're actually going to have to introduce some new leaves because this is not enough anymore, which is why I got a little bit extra. Just add that dry leaf in. And now we add in the rest of our water. Hopefully that's enough that you can actually see it. The water in this right here, let me just kind of circle that around a little bit. So how you do this one is you actually have to wait a full amount of time. And then you put it right there and wait and then you press all of the leaves out. So this one, you normally use it for coffee, which recently we actually did use it for coffee, which is what it's intended for, and we'll link that up here for you to watch. Um, we, we tried it with actual white coffee. It's, it kind of tastes like peanuts. We have a new light roast coffee, which is actually better. So occasionally I drink it in the morning, but only if it's the one that daddy has to grind himself. But she will not be drinking it on a regular basis because her brain needs to grow. So now we press this. The mesh actually removes any trace of the tea leaves and leaves you with a beautiful clear nest. And this actually is just as dark as the one from the Katani and has much less leaf. So if you're not opposed to only having a few infusions because your leaves will get um, kind of flat after a while, this is actually a really good option just kind of like for a one to two infusion thing. And you can keep the leaves in here and you don't have to move anything because the leaves are all being pressed down so nothing's infusing anymore. And now to the voting. This one. 9.5 out of 10. If you accidentally don't press this, it can fall on your hand, and that makes a really loud noise. It doesn't break, but it's a really loud noise. Guy won. 8.7, because you can, you know, ah, do that and spill it, which can get slightly annoying. Kutani gets 10 out of 10 because of this handle. This is my new favorite thing ever. This thing gets four out of 10 because it burned me, but it is slightly useful. This one gets around an eight out of 10 because while it is useful, um, it can kind of smush your leaves. So until next time, make sure to make time for teeing a good book.